hi. We're just about to go live on uh, Mulberry Creek Hour on CHMR. Thanks for joining us again. One minute. We're on one minute. I've got notes tonight. I don't know why. I don't know why. I just decided to be organized. Ready to go? Ready to roll. Now I just gotta um, put it all, make it all happen. I usually just make it up as I go along, but today I made it up before I went along. Let's see if I can <laughs> do the thing. <clears throat> we got a bunch of, we got a really fantastic guest um, this evening. We're really excited. Mike Fisher. Mike Fisher. Mike, Mike and I go back a long way. We, we were in the trenches together many moons ago, and he has a brand new EP out. I'm just talking to him on the lobby. He's been, he's been making CDs and vinyl albums since 83. I was not born yet. I was. Uh, but I was very young, and uh, he was making music. So I'm going to have a great chat with Mike. And we got some songs from his brand new EP, and there's a release party coming up, so stay tuned, and we'll give you notes on that. We'll give you details on that, not notes. You're not taking notes. There's no exam. 20 seconds. Music's great. Well, that was a news break. Yes, us? It's 5 o'clock or so, around that time. Something like that. On Tuesday, so that means it's the Mulberry Creek Hour. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Vicki Morgan, and I'm joined by Josh Morgan. Josh, say hey. Hello. <laughs> so we got a fantastic, fantastic show. We're really excited about it. we got Mike Fisher out in the lobby. We have to come in. He's got a brand new album uh, that's coming out uh, this week. Release party. There's all kinds of stuff. There's a, there's a nighttime show. With some fantastic people opening up, and on Saturday, on Sunday, sorry, guess what? What? He's doing a CD release at Fred's Records down on. Oh, those Saint are so fun. In St. John's. So if you're not in St. John's, my deepest apologies to you. You're <laughs> missing out. Condolences. Condolences. Condolences because uh, you're missing out. The shows at Fred's, uh, the CD release shows, are absolutely fantastic. And it's one o'clock in the afternoon. You can just go down and hear the like hear the music. It's fantastic. So we're excited about that. We got a few other things to tell you about. But first, what are we doing first, Joshua? I think you should play a song first. Well, I do have this one. Jesus laid this on my heart. And, I, you know, it's kind of funny because I start thinking about this show a couple of hours before we come over to the studio. And uh, it's usually while I'm brushing my teeth or, you know, somewhere around running water. And I said, you know what? I really like this song. Uh, it's not on the new EP from Mulberry Creek, but it's... Um, it's going to be on the next one, probably. Oh, it will be for sure. It's kind of funny because I think there's a handful of people out around the world that kind of know me as a mental health advocate. And... It's so I find this this song like I kind of feel uncomfortable introducing it sometimes because it almost goes against that whole mental advocacy you know mental health advocacy you know looking out for everybody wanting to help the world and stuff. This is more of a I feel feel like as I've gotten older it's it's become more and more uh, vital to take care of my own mental health first. Put, put on your own uh, oxygen mask first, right? Well, that's exactly right. And I feel like a lot of people get so burnt out and exhausted from trying to take care of other people that they lose themselves. And then when they hit around 40, 45, 50 years old, they go, you know what? <laughs> anyway, mine hit when I was, oh God, so how long have we been together? 17? Almost 17 years. So 20 years ago. Um, this song is about living with uh, someone with alcohol problems. I think it might, you, know, you could call it an addiction. You could call it a disease um, and that's you know that can be really taxing for the partners and I don't know that there's a whole lot of songs about that I don't know maybe there's tons I don't know maybe I'm just wrapped up in my own little world but anyway <laughs> this song is called I'll Do Me and uh, it was inspired by a moment I didn't I didn't write this till the last oh, you know maybe a couple years ago but the experience was I was in a relationship with somebody who was an alcoholic and very abusive and unpleasant and you know I had my own stuff too. I had my own stuff going on. And so I just remember this the morning. I, I say this at shows sometimes. I've never done it on the radio before. But anyway, <laughs> I'm introducing the song. Um, there was just this morning where I got up and this person had like made toast before he went to work. He had made toast. And I don't know if you're not from Newfoundland, maybe jam toast is not a thing that's part of your normal diet. But so you make the <laughs> toast, you take it out of the toaster, you put it on the counter and you put butter on it. And then you take, you know, jam and you put jam on over that. And so what I got up to was these sticky... Um, outlines of toast on the counter and the jam was the jar was still left open and the sticky knives were left on the counter and I was like who the frig does he think is cleaning that up like I'm <laughs> it was the silliest little thing because most people don't don't get divorced over toasts 
toast impressions on the counter. But it's probably it's probably it was just like you know what yeah. I've had enough because it was just it was just toxic and gross. And like I said, I had my own stuff going on. So anyway, this one's called I'll Do Me, and it's about living with somebody that uh, you just wake up that morning and go, you know what, this guy, he's not my kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> Missing uh, doing songs in the studio audience. We don't have like. Can you get an app or something? We're gonna that, have to uh, yeah, get one of those applause machines to give you the applause that that song rightfully deserved. <laughs> you know what's funny is I, I keep thinking about people who choose to be entertainers and performers and all that stuff, and I keep going back to like, were they just not hugged enough as children? <laughs> <laughs> and that's not the case. I was hugged too much by all the wrong people. So you know, it kind of goes both. Things, right? It's kind of like that needle just flicks over too much further the other way. Anyway, that's where we are. So that song, not my best mental health advocate song. That's more of a uh, self-care, self-care song. And uh, no offense to anybody that might have been in that story. I'm sure they're lovely people and all that stuff. But you know, it wasn't wasn't for me. That's all. <laughs> it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. And uh, that's okay. You know, I'm, what was it? I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but um, some people shot a tequila. So we'll take that. It's a good one. You like that one? You I just like made that up. Did you? I did. I, no, I actually <laughs> made it up a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I've polished it. i polished yeah. it for the radio. So we got a great guest coming up. So i got a couple of things to mention to you. That There's some stuff coming up that we want to make sure you get out to if you are in the mood to go out and be have your face melted off by entertainment. Uh, Jared Waterman, our buddy Jared, is doing a show on Thursday night at The Ship. Uh, it's, of course, a production of Pharaoh's Music. So there's a bunch of people who are signed with Pharaoh's who are... Um, they're doing a little songwriter circle down the ship on Thursday, June 1st. And so it's Jared Waterman, Selena Bowen. We know Selena from the Battery Cafe, of course. Yep. And Tom Pinson and Mike Thomas. And uh, tickets are on Jared Waterman Music on Facebook, on Eventbrite. Um, you can get them in advance. And I think that's it for Jared's show. So Thursday, make sure you get up to see that. You know we love Jared here on, on Mulberry Creek Hour. And um, what are we going to do next? Well, uh, I say we play a song and then get our, get our guest in here. What are we going to play? Um, I got the navigator skewed up. Ooh, I love that. I love that. 
So, so what, this, what, one's off, this one's off a new album. This is uh, Flower for the Lady. So, this is about, this is a story that I, I was not in Newfoundland for. Oh, so, so you didn't have the experience. I did not that. have this experience. So oh. when we go to their shows and they're telling the story, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh. I mean, I got the idea. There's people like that in most towns. But. Well, Newfoundland, you know, doesn't have a whole lot of those characters. So it was very unique, and everybody knew this gentleman. So there used to be this young, uh, this older gentleman who would hang around on uh, downtown and would come up to you with a basket of carnations when you were um, having a chat with somebody. And sometimes it was, you know, sometimes it was kind of like the nice little uh, uh, prod that you needed. <laughs> <laughs> but he'd come up and he'd say, "Flower for the lady," and uh, it's a beautiful song. It was after O'Brien wrote it, of course, and uh, they just toured with this new album. They have a brand new album out, which you can get down at Fred's. And uh, is it online? Is your I'm not I sure. I haven't, we've been listening to the CD, so so I you can get it. Of course, they're also they also have a shop on AtlanticMusic.ca, yeah. so you can go check out the Navigator stuff. And this is called "Flower for the Lady" by the Navigators. Joseph, that was his name. Yeah, apparently he was Polish. He was a Polish immigrant. He had a family and kids and everything. Raised a family. Here in the oh, that's okay. You can make sure. So I'll go you get. You don't need that for levels, do you? I'll go get Mike. Um, yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, you know what? That Fred Jorgensen, he could sing now. He could sing the phone book. I'd listen. And and Arthur, to hear them to just boot out, built out the harmony. It's enough to make you sick. It good. really is. They just know. They just know. It's really nice to see see guys who are really good at what they're doing. I love watching people work who are really talented and and found their uh, you know found their calling and. I'm going to get Mike, so. and uh, one more, my during the interview, we're going to play a couple of his songs um, from the new EP that are really fun. It's a, it's a, it's a bop, like the kids say. It's pretty uh, rocking. So welcome again. Fantastic. Maybe we can set the phone up up here, and get everybody. Maybe. Well, we need to do something. We're very, very excited to have Mike in the studio because I've um, known Mike a really long time. A really long time. So we're excited about that. And then I got some, I got a couple of little things that I'm working on that I'm going to share after after uh, Mike tells us all about his brand new EP. No live assassinations in the Arizona. <laughs> not yet, not today. Mike's here, and your mic is there. So, where do you want to put this? Uh, I'm going to go over to the other side, but it's still good. Let me do that. Okay, is that easier? It's easier. Alright. Let's do that. Let's swing you around. And you can just adjust it however you see fit. Okay. Do you have change? Cool. No, I got no more. Okay. Oh, I didn't bring my mid screen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're just for show. I don't think they actually do anything. Um, if well, you just want to use one, I've got an extra one over here. That that's fine. You have my CD in the player, don't you? Can I have the case? Just give me the case. I'll breathe across the uh, mic. <laughs> yes. Lots of words with P's and S's. Yeah, that's why I was Steve. You know, not not, not mine. Not mine. What did you like? I want to buy Mike's CD. Mike, over I thought you said mine. No, oh, you can buy your own CD. I could. <laughs> Do you want to um, take care of the phone? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's bring our Facebook Live over here. Oh, are we right. live, too? We are live, and then we put it on... Um... Oh, I didn't do any makeup. <laughs> Don't we have people for that? We do. Uh, we put it on. We're putting them on YouTube, and we're doing like little shorts and stuff from the interviews, and um, okay, cool. repurposing all the stuff because, I mean, for the thousands and thousands of people that listen on CHMR, you know... <laughs> this I'm is... wearing my own T-shirt. Well, that's on the cover of the scene. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it. it's on. Uh, it's a logo. It's also on the bass drum head. So, who made that? Um, the Bellini Children's Boutique. I did some reaction T-shirts, and I got some made of mine yeah. for sale. But they closed down. They only do orders from their house now. Oh, they were on the um, Bellini. I think it's Bellini, a children's boutique, and um, huh. I believe it's Bellini. It's something like that, and. Uh, yeah, they were on Duckworth, but they closed down during the pandemic. Okay. So, but they still. Uh, that's only one color. We, that's a screen print. That's what we did. with ours. So, yeah. uh, are they? Are we doing PSA right now? Yeah, thirty seconds. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to be really excited about a hockey player with a musician <laughs> in the family, and you correct me. 
Okay. You didn't see this. This mystery of television. Pretend you didn't see what I didn't even hear what I just did. <laughs> did you know there's a Toastmasters group at Memorial? Yes. I did not know that. They're very social. They're very uh, helping people. Very toasty. Is that Fifteen seconds. Is that gonna be funny? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'm insulting and leaving. No, I'm out of here. Why does he have a hockey stick with him? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready, guys? Welcome back to the Mulberry Creek Hour. I'm Vicki Morgan. Of course, it's close somewhere around 5 o'clock on Tuesdays. That's where we are every Tuesday. I don't know where you are. We're at 518. 518. Sunny, sunny Tuesday afternoon. Here where we are. I am beyond excited. This time of year is always really exciting for me because it's playoff season. Playoff time, and uh, that's always a really exciting time of year because all the work and stuff that goes into, you know, winning those trophies and playing as a team and keeping your stick on the ice and right, keeping right, focus right. and all that kind of stuff. So I'm super, super excited to have one of my favorite hockey players. And also, not only is my favorite hockey player, but there's an extra level to Mike Fisher. He is married to this uh, to a musician. So I, I really have a lot of questions today about how do you navigate hockey and like uh, how was your how season you, hang, in hang Vegas? On, and, hang on, like, just one second that. there, there Vicky. I think you, you got your Mike Fisher's confused. This is uh, Mike Fisher, the uh, St. John's musician. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, if I, I was Mike Fisher, the hockey player, I'd be retired and a house husband <laughs> in Nashville. <laughs> Do you? Oh, okay, well, but, but I'm not. Let's do I do have an action figure of his, though. Do you even play hockey? Do you skate? I hate skates. Oh my god! This <laughs> yeah. is... No, I'm, I when I'm I was gonna... a kid, it was not a thing. Okay, well, yeah. let's start the show. Over. This is the Mulberry Creek. Disappointing. So this is yeah. uh, this is going to be a crap show. I don't even. I wouldn't even listen to it. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, I'm done. All right, we're good. And reset. All yeah. right, I'm a professional. Uh, so we're joined by my good buddy Mike Fisher, uh, the real Mike Fisher, the only the important real Mike Fisher, Mike Fisher. Right. the legend, the man, the myth. Mike Fisher, <laughs> thank you so much for being on the Mulberry Creek Hour, buddy. It's good to see you. Yes, thank you for the invite. Oh my God, we go back a long way. We we actually fought in the trenches of television production. Yeah, we go back a long way. So Mike was around way back when. So I just sang a song about a relationship that I had many moons ago when I I actually got married at a hockey game. I remember that St. John's Maple Leafs. Yep, and you know yeah. back in those days I had never touched a camera. Ah, just finishing. We're just putting some polish and we're yeah. editing a yeah. book right now about the whole uh, the journey of being a filmmaker and all that stuff. And I back when we first met, I had never touched a camera. I was very scared of all that stuff. And here we are now. Yeah. All these years later, you were there for the birth of Junior Dust. That's right. <laughs> crazy, crazy Santa phone ends on Rogers TV. And uh, actually, I retired last summer. So yeah. right now, I'm not too concerned what happens there. Although we're going to be on the fog. <laughs> Thursday, this Thursday, June 1st. So that was very nice of uh, Perry to get me on. Absolutely. Yeah. Perry Chafe, of course, uh, is another producer over at Rogers. Perry Cooper. Perry Cooper. Perry Chafe was, was on the show last, last week. Good last week, God. Yeah. See, Lots this is rest. why this is why it's scary that it's, a, it's an age thing. It's that anyone matter. anyone lets me narrow a live <laughs> yeah. microphone because I can make mistakes right on the air, which is also still occasionally, okay. occasionally. Occasionally, but I do have a producer who makes sure I'm on track. So, so Mike Fisher was there for the birth of Ginger Sparkle Lust, and I always like to find out how it is to be on the other side of that kind of weirdness. <laughs> what was that like? Do you remember that evening? <laughs> I came to answer phones with a. I yeah, got a Christmas outfit. Uh, I thought everybody'd be dressed the same way. Apparently, <laughs> nobody got the memo, and I was the only person dressed head to toe in. Twinkly Bells and... Elf. Elf, Elf apparel. Elf. Yeah, well, for me, it didn't really affect much because I was directing and trying to keep the phone line straight. So <laughs> I think, again, our friend Perry Cooper was the one who goaded you on and oh my God. made you do a silly thing. Oh, so he, that, was, uh, he yeah. was like that little devil devil on your shoulder. It yeah. was not telling me yeah. to behave. It was really... Miss? Yeah, seeing what he could actually, uh, how much trouble he could get into. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. So, Ginger Sparkless, we're going to put a clip um, to some of the old broadcasts of that later on. Cool. And we're moving on, because Mike Fisher has some cool stuff going on. I didn't realize how far, how long you've been making me up. I haven't been around. I was like, oh, it's Dave UCD. It's not even yeah. close. And I'm going to do yeah. a little tutorial on the radio now. Uh, you can't see this on the radio, but you can see it. We're live streaming on Facebook, of course, and it's on YouTube eventually. Um, here's the process. Mike Fisher put out a brand new EP. I like Mike. We're friends. We've been back. We, we go we back like a long music. time. I like music. I like what he's doing. So here's what I'm going to do. Hey, Mike, you got a copy of your CD there for sale? Uh, I do, actually. How much is it? Well, uh, it would be $10. I have money in my possession. I'm going to exchange money 
for a copy of Michael's CD. Oh, that was a lovely tutorial. There we go. Look at that. Change, though. Eco oh, that, well, now see, this is the thing. If you <laughs> if you call your CD ten dollars or fifteen dollars, yeah. and someone doesn't have change, yeah. then well, it becomes well. twenty. So everyone wins. <laughs> but this is the exchange of uh, uh, services and goods that happens that makes the economy flow. Then Michael will in turn uh, go spend that at the farmers market or at the mall. I don't care what he spends it on. But then those people will in turn spend it, and this is how the economy works. Creative people. Are making stuff. Yeah, mostly uh, pet food, I think. <laughs> so we have two dogs, two cats. So, oh my God. And they eat. <laughs> that's, been, that's a lot of fur. Uh, yes. We only have three. And I have allergies too. So. Oh, yeah. so we have three animals in our house. We got three beagles. Yeah. And they're, nice. they're they, crazy. They, they must be noisy though. They are, when they, they get going, be. when they hear like a leaf falling three miles no. away, <laughs> they'll go a little bit crazy. So, Mike, tell me about right. it. This is something that I don't know. We, we've been to a few open mics and stuff. At the same yes. time, but your music career happened almost adjacent to everything else you've done over the years. Yeah. I didn't realize how far back. Tell me, when did you start playing and, and writing your own stuff? Well, we went, uh, okay, in a quick nutshell, um, I moved to Newfoundland in uh, 72. My dad retired from the Air Force. I met the guys. Jeff White was in my band now. Uh, Steve Jackson was just here, has a jazz show. Um, that was in mid-70s, and we had a band, and then I left and went away for about 18 years. I played bands in Ontario, top 40 bands, toured, came back, we reformed what became Hammingwell, and did a CD, and that was nominated for our alternative album, and we did a big showcase out at Rocky Harbor, and played St. Pierre, and George Street, and we did a lot of Pink Floyd, mm -hmm. so that was kind of our selling point, like a Pink Floyd tribute. Prior to that, uh, I was in a band called The Reaction, which was um, 79 to 81, and they were the second punk band in Newfoundland. The Slime were the first. Nice. And we were the second, yeah. But we played a lot more. Like, we went to Halifax and we moved to Toronto, and we had, uh, you know, um, our vinyl release. It was only a 45. It, uh, you know, sells for about a thousand bucks on eBay now on the beach, and the <laughs> kids arrived. And um, a song called Get the Rods Out, it's on YouTube. It has, you know, 200. K views or something. Huh. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so it's good. Anyway, I do some reaction on my show. Anyway, jumping forward, so when reaction broke up, I, Steve got together with me again. We did Neon with Sam Sandoval. We did a four song EP on vinyl and played a, a lot. And then that's when I moved away. We came back. Hemingwell started. And then um, uh, after that, I did some trad stuff with Hugh Scott in a band called Dungarvan. So, two separate things. And then I said, I'm going to start doing solo work and uh, improve my guitar skills because mostly I was a bass player. I always played drums and guitar but not seriously so I took about two years and just played and that's why I was doing the open mics when you came down Vicky just <laughs> to uh, get practice. I did not know that. Yeah and try a material. So uh, I did an album in 2019 with the help of Art Sinel called Psyche Punk, Vinyl Only yep. and um, it's on Bandcamp and stuff and, um, and then pandemic hit. I had dates lined up, you know, in Newfoundland and, and Ottawa and Toronto. So we just, uh, that all quashed. And uh, the last year I was working on the Diary of Psychic Vampire, which is the CD you just gratefully purchased. <laughs> so is there a tour? So all the dates that you had for the, in 2020, yeah. um, are they, are those venues still open to having you come play? I, well, venues? I don't know if I want to do that now. Oh, okay. Uh, we just, I lined up four things in Newfoundland. Yep. Um, we did Gander and uh, Carboneer last Friday, yeah. and we have a CD release coming this Saturday, June 1st at The Ship, and uh, is it June 1st? No, June 3rd, sorry, June 3rd, June 3rd Saturday, and the next day we're at Fred's at 1 p.m., and uh, that's all I have lined up right now. I'd like to do the West Coast, maybe, yep. and uh, St. Pierre, if possible, but it, it depends on the guys in the band, too, although I can play solo. Like with a drum box and stuff, but I, I prefer to have a full band. Yeah, it's definitely more, um, it's a different sound, it's a different feeling oh, yeah, no. behind you. Um, so I didn't realize that, and it's funny because we didn't know each other as musicians. So yeah. this is like, what the hell are we doing in a radio station talking about our <laughs> albums? Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a pretty fun. fantastic uh, yeah. uh, musical journey. It, yeah. it, it's long, yeah. <laughs> and, and the bands I was in, in uh, I was in a band in Regina called The Toasters, so it was like a blue, kind of like ZZ Top, and um, a band in Ottawa with Paul Fenton was the leader. Uh, he put out three or four CDs that I was on, so I've kind of been like so many unsigned bands. I'm writing a book about it. <laughs> yeah, you should. And right now, I'm sort of up to where I moved back to Newfoundland, and then I stopped. So that's um, impressive. Yeah. Really. Let's talk about publishing after that. So let's get a song off the CD. Which one are we going to listen to first? I think we're going to play "Diary of Psychic Vampire," which is the title of the EP, EP. and it is uh, basically when you meet people or you have relatives and you feel drained after talking to them. Yep. <laughs> 
Yep. We all have them. We got them all. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> walk through them all. <laughs> yeah, and they just seem to thrive off it. Where you're like, oh boy, I don't want to see them again for a while. So it's just you know not a blood vampire, but an emotional vampire. It's so funny, you know, because this like this kind of language was so beyond me for so many years, and then I started meeting all these people who started talking about energy, and I was like, yeah, yeah. that's. I just thought I was coming down with something after being around <laughs> certain people, but it's really anyway. Let's listen. To, let's listen to Mike's interpretation, his translation of that uh, feeling and thought into musical. Uh, notes. Let's hear Diary of a Psychic Vampire from Mike Fisher. Gorgeous. No hockey sticks. <laughs> um, so then we just goof around while we're waiting because we don't. Yeah. So we don't play the songs on the Facebook Live because they don't pay so can't fees. Right. Not that there's a whole lot of stuff coming from CHMR so can't fees. I've never. No. Yeah. Remember. <laughs> the, uh, they do like a monitor every quarter or something like that and. So. I'm hosting the video for that song on Friday, right. so we didn't mention that. And YouTube or Facebook? It'll be YouTube, and YouTube. I'll give you my YouTube yeah. thing. I'll well, you. I'll link to Facebook as well. So. Yep. And so, is it a, is it a, what kind of video is it? Well, it's basically, we use a stone jug in Carbonier. So and it's I was a live like, performance? No, you know, I like was a, a psychic. And I had people come in, and I'd read their fortunes, and they'd just like be drained and leave. Nice. And then I did a reverse shot where I had put my hand over the ball, and comes up, and the walk. So out. it's like a film. It's it like is a film. film. Yeah. We have one of those uh, those camera crystal ball oh, crystal things. Crystal ball. For, yeah. for like, I think it's just probably the same kind that you have on the CD cover. Uh, yeah. Oh no, no the thing I sent. The, the problem yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I bought it from Natural Nature Emporium. Natural. Yeah. Did you ever do any? Sh- did you ever shoot anything through it? No. That's where we saw it. Someone had a picture of like, like a wedding, beach. and it was on a beach, and they had like the whole wedding party in oh, the yeah. ball, and the beach was behind it. It was like a like a photography. Yeah, well, I morphed some of the imagery into it. Oh, like, cool. With effects. But, yeah, yeah. So. That was a. I, that we never actually used it for that, did we? Yeah, we. I saw it on a, someone else's TikTok or something like that, and then <laughs> they went and found on. track one down, and then mm-hmm. it sat there through a whole pandemic. So that video will be coming out this week? Okay. Friday night, yeah. Very I'm going to post it just before the show. I was hoping MTV would air quick, but I haven't heard back from Amanda, so that I have, that's why I haven't posted it. Yet. That doesn't mean she's not going to call, though. This no, well, Matt, Matt Dines, again, um, Hurricane Music, he's doing my publicity. Oh, so um, he's, I'm letting him kind of yep. bugger. <laughs> yeah, he'll, they'll, I'm sure he'll get that. Just, yeah. I'm going to do some... Um, if not the week, it'll... Be yeah, yeah I think eventually uh, she'll easy. get to it, but... What's it like to have somebody hand when you're marketing? Well, I paid. And it's part of my budget from Arts and L yeah. for promotion, but it's great. Because he did a beautiful press release and uh, all the dates and the bio. And, and they just took care of, of all songs. of it. Yeah. It was Matt Carter, the um, uh, grant process? Did you no. write the grant? You, did you write the grant? I wrote the grant, yeah. Oh, that's hard. That's the second one I got money for. So that's hard stuff, man. Trying to be a third party and talk about your project, like yeah. that, to make, to make it have merit and artistic, yeah. all that stuff. Oh. Well, a lot of the bones I took from uh, the Psyche Punk application yeah. and changed it around, add new music and a bit more of a marketing plan. Yeah, it helps if you have material. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> it was not just an idea you thought up. Like, yeah, I, I had le- letters of support from a lot of people, like Bill Rose, and uh, you know, yeah, just uh, a lot of musicians and stuff. Hugh Scott and. So the Arts and funding was from this past fiscal, this past year? Yeah, okay. that one. So I haven't done the final report yet. Nice. And the book that you're working on, you know, there's writers, there's there's uh, Arts yeah. and Oh, yeah, writing, no, no, no. Right? I gave a, a couple of uh, um, paragraphs to um, Engine Books. Yep. Because um, he's a... Indie. Yeah, and he's going beyond uh, sci-fi and stuff, so I haven't heard back from him yet. So they handle marketing and stuff, too? I guess I don't know. I'm not really, uh, you know, concerned with the book. It's just kind of it's just something you're. Yeah, you know, I'm sort of. It's like more of a memoir, but <laughs> it's just something that's just falling out of you. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I had a lot of stories, and you know, there's a lot more I could tell, but it's all clean. So <laughs> thirty <laughs> seconds. All right, perfect. So I'll talk about the video, I guess, when we get. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. What time? Five thirty-two. Shit. What? I missed. Time's going fast. Oh my God. We'll talk for a few minutes and then play another song, and then we can. Oh, yeah, no, you can go that. during the second song. If yeah, you cool. Know, we can have an easy. What was the Oh yeah, <laughs> kill my neighbors. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Five I love the Richard Simmons song. <laughs> that was Mike Fisher with <laughs> Diary of a Psychic Vampire, and I just remembered a song that I heard Mike play one time. <laughs> it's just. Just tickles me all the right ways. Was what's the, I know it's about Richard Simmons, but what's the title? I could have tripped Richard Simmons. It's on the first solo release, Psyche Punk. 
And uh, it's basically based on a true story of the uh, David Letterman <laughs> taping. And he ran right beside me. I was on the third balcony. And I could put my foot out. He would have tripped. Like, fall, he could have. Fall into could his have ended it all. Yeah, I know. But I didn't. I was nice. So. Mike is a hoot to watch live. He really, it really reminds me of one of those uh, Stephen King stories. Like the, uh, what was those, the Dead Zone where the guy shook the hands with the politician and saw everything he could have done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dead Zone. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Probably. Could have taken out Richard Simmons. Who looks at Richard Simmons and thought, I could have taken him out. Yeah. Uh, did he get on your nerves? Was it something that you wish you had done? No, no, not at all. I mean, you know what he is. He just just ran down and blah, 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 everywhere <laughs> up to David Letterman bounce around and it's like hey oh, he's like he was right beside me anyway so you gotta see okay so there's a couple of different facets to Mike Mike of course has a massive background I didn't realize you had this musical career like going parallel to everything else uh, TV, you've been doing yeah. for so many years uh, so of course there is a brand new video out for Diary of Psychic Vampire and when are you going to release that to the, to the masses it'll be on YouTube on Friday June 2nd and what's your, what's your, how do we find you on YouTube? Uh, MF Moving Picture. MF Moving Pictures. Yeah. That's so like it's basically. Too. Sorry. Yeah, so ahead. there's all kinds of uh, different ways to do music videos. Like some people are really, you know, the easiest one, of course, is a lyric video. Yeah. Where you just put a still and the lyrics just roll up over the screen, which is still moving. If people yeah. need visuals. Right? I did one for the uh, Roadside Shrines. A lyric video. And when's that coming out? Uh, it's on it's YouTube now. Yeah. So, and of course, there's also uh, live, you know, a lot of footage of a band playing the thing live. And then there's also, there's these other creative people out there who do stories. Now, we've had Jake Delaney do a couple for us where he has like a narrative put together and it plays behind the song and the band shows up every now and then. So this one, this new video you have is more like a, a short film. It's a film, yeah. Basically, I had, I'm a uh, fortune teller and we shot it at the beautiful Stone Jug in Carboneer. The third floor. I don't know if you've ever seen the building, but it's amazing, you know, recreated. It's very spooky in its own way. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of my relatives <laughs> be my clients, and I'd suck the energy out of them, <laughs> you know, with a crystal ball. And so, it. yeah, so uh, MF Movie Picture. I'll do a link to my Facebook as well. Yeah, we'll put those in the links in the show. And uh, yeah, you got to check that out because Mike is, you know, one of those multifaceted artists that. He seems so quiet and so unassuming, and then it's like, boom, guess what? He's a freaking genius yeah. sitting right in your midst, right? <laughs> That's right. Oh, thank you. It's freaking awesome. So you, your show coming up at the ship on Friday. Saturday. On Saturday. Yes. Sorry, Saturday, yep. June 3rd. 3rd. Yeah. I got two. Okay, so so we got different. the video on Friday, the show at the ship on yes. Saturday, yep. the show at the... At, a, at, at Fred's, Fred's on, on Sunday. Yeah, 1 p.m. on Sunday. That's so on Saturday, weekend. there's a couple of opening uh, acts. Matt Dines, who we... I, I know I say I like people... Like, I, I talk a lot about people that I like... I don't talk about people I don't like, so that's why it seems like, oh, she just loves everybody. No, I just talk about people I like, and, yeah. you know, really, yeah. Because <laughs> I love people that I connect with. Matt Dines, one of those people. Absolutely spectacular as a sound. He's one of those people that sets you at ease and really has a great air for it. And he also, of course, runs Hurricane... Yeah, uh, Hurricane Music. Hurricane Music. So he's been promoting Sears, with Dave Shears. He's been promoting, actual, like, musicians, which is yeah. just blows my mind. And he's such a great, great human being. And he's opening. So Matt Dines and Zy Nova are going to be at the ship opening yeah. up for Mike. And they start at 9.30. So his ticket's at the door. Yep. And then, of course, at Fred's on Sunday, you can go down and see the CD release, uh, which is just, we've been to a few of those down at Fred's, and it's just like, what an old building and so much history. Yeah. What a fantastic uh, feeling it is to have your have your EP or your album or whatever. Yeah, I did one in the solo when the Reaction EP came out. The, the, the label in Victoria uh, released four songs from the Reaction and called uh, East End Rockers. I did a solo show there, and that was just, I think, 2020. Again, for the uh, or 2019. Before the world yeah, before, yeah, everything went weird. <laughs> so, times. Mike, how do you find when, like, because you've been with different bands and stuff yeah. like that? So, if I went into Fred's and I said, What do you get from Mike Fisher? Like, unless the guy, be, and of course, like Fred's, they would be able to say, Okay, yeah. he's been with the reaction and, and Hammingwell. But, like, do you find it's, um, does it is it problematic to start over with a brand new band and like lose the momentum you had with another or uh, with another? Not group? really. I think there was enough distance in between it. Okay. So and now I'm promoting my solo work and, and you know I do uh, reference all of the past on yep. the albums. Yep. And uh, or posters. Yeah. And I will play some reaction. So. so it's not hard to let go of the old stuff. Like oh well, we yeah. had such a hit back then. Like uh, you know. Well, actually, the uh, night of fireworks time is right. Um, was a Hemingwell song that I wrote, I and I changed some lyrics. Yeah. So you wrote all the CD. You wrote all the yeah. stuff on this one. Um, tell me, how would you describe it? How would you do, like what genre? <laughs> I would call a cross between Genesis and the Tragically Hip. <laughs> so it's got a pretty hard edge, okay, but a little prog influence there. And uh, I think we're going to hear uh, "Is It Against a Lot to Kill My Neighbors." It was kind of a punk, most punk song on it. And I'll tell that's you, a, that's the that's a very good comparison for these yeah. for this. Uh, 
uh, album. The I think, Genesis yeah. and Tragic Hip, that's a really good... Yeah, I think it's sort of in that, that realm. Yeah. So, like, I, I love what the Tragic Hip did, and I love guitar rock, but I also grew up in early Genesis, the Gabriel years, and the Prague oh, yeah. and stuff, so, hmm. you know, I like throwing a bit of that in there. So, Josh, years ago, uh, when I first met him, was in a punk band. Oh, yeah, and Which I was uh, It was called 25 Minutes to Go. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> the North Carolina punk band that you never heard of. Yeah. Well, oh, cool. but they had, they had just signed, they had, like, a little indie label that were interested in him, and he moved to Canada. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't... I can't account for these decisions. I'm just happy that he did that. Um, but there was a punk, so he used to do punk shows years ago, and there'd be like three or four groups. And, yeah. and so it wouldn't be like opening acts and a headliner. It would be all the shows, yeah. all the bands were, you know, they'd have their little fan groups show up and all that kind of stuff. So Josh, you know, is uh, he's got that background, so I'm not really sure how he ended up in Mulberry Creek, but here we are, <laughs> we're happy to have him. Fine. So, And we yes. definitely identify with this sentiment, is it against the law? Now, I love my neighbors right now. We yeah. live in a great neighborhood, but... There have been some doozies. There's been some neighbors. There's been some yeah, doozies. Yeah, we had, uh, when we were living in the town, we live out of town now. Uh, there was a house next door that we rent out the basement to unsavory characters, <laughs> 3 a.m. police visits, pounding oh. on the door, arrests. Yelling, shouting, so well, that's sort of where it came from. Oh, I just flash back on my childhood. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's but, nostalgia, and then like also, like man, Christmas. I'm so glad I'm not there anymore. It is apparently against the law, so <laughs> <laughs> it is frowned upon, but it yeah. does happen. It, oh yes, yeah, as we saw recently. I feel a bit badly about that title, but oh well. <laughs> oh, it's. I mean, it is a musical interpret. Like it's, yeah. you know, it's music and it's artistic and all that stuff. Right. And they don't. It's not a suggestion. Don't try it at home. No. Don't really. try to be Mike Fisher at home because it's impossible to. <laughs> I to haven't anybody. killed anyone yet. <laughs> yeah, they ain't over yet. Yeah. <laughs> so this is is it against the law to kill my neighbors from Mike Fisher? Did something happen? Did some other neighbors? Something? Is there something in the news I didn't hear about? No. Okay. No, they all. <laughs> it's all the time. We moved. Oh. Sold the house. But I think they they had they were getting nice people in there when we were. Oh, fantastic. To sell the place. So we can um, we, we can come back from the song and uh, do a goodbye. Tour. Yeah, I'd like yeah, to say yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. We did a we went and did a show. We did a video for somebody where to, to promote a show. And while we were standing on this young guy, he was like a teenager. Yeah. Um, he was doing a fundraiser, and uh, while we were shooting the thing on his lawn, they were like, "Yeah, last night there was or like that weekend." The car across the street had pulled in, and there was like a person got out of the trunk. They had somebody, like, <laughs> they had somebody like restrained in the trunk oh, really? of the car. It wasn't a wedding party. It was in Mount Pearl. Oh, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, How does this uh, happen? I owe you ten. Uh, I'm not worried about that. Give me two. Give me two, so I can do a giveaway. Do you have another one with you? Mm, I don't, but I'll get it to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what? And I'm coming to town Thursday, so just tell me where to drop it off. And, yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Give him a CD. Do we have any CD? You want to buy a CD? You want a copy of ours? Sure. <laughs> I but don't know. Math is, is beyond me right now. You're going the wrong direction. Am yeah. I going in the wrong direction? Yeah. Okay. I'm functioning. Yes. I'm here. Just I got my with, notes. Yeah, um, I'll give is, you another one of those. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 do that. The, yes. The sweat. So the mug is for Shannon. Oh, yeah. Awesome. And she's lovely. And that's yeah. a shirt. So that shirt yeah. is not, uh, that song hasn't been released yet. We play it all the time. Okay. Um. But yeah, it's called That's All. So that's uh, that's a lovely part of you for being on the show. Well, I appreciate it, Matt. I'll get you another CD, and thank you for the purchase. No problem. No problem. My, my pleasure. So we'll... Um, We're trying to promote, you know, the yeah. idea. No, of I'm exchanging. Like, yeah, of exchanging. Because it's not... Uh, sometimes it's like a little bit thick, right? Like, yeah. it doesn't quite get through. When people go, oh, you did a CD. That's fantastic. And then they just yeah. stare at you. And it's like... Do you want a free one? And I did this on my first book. Yeah. I couldn't handle the uncomfortableness, like the discomfort. And so I'd go, here, just take it. And then I'd walk yeah. away going, why did I do that? Yeah, I sold a few off, uh, I sold two vinyl in Gander and one Reaction CD. Yeah. And one of those. And then at the uh, Carboneer, I sold a Reaction CD and one of those. Nice. So do you have yeah. stock of the old vinyls on, like, on hand for any play? Oh, yeah. Nice. And follow up question to that if you wanted to do another print run, is it possible for you to order more if you ever need Oh, yeah. I, all the files are there. That's all done. disc and audio. Yeah. Yeah. Is that this vinyl? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. why I did the Psyche Punk. Yeah. So actually, that, if, you know, that does well. I'm considering doing vinyl on that. So. Nice and the reverse of the other one. <laughs> CD. This is a great, this is a great yeah. kind of genre for vinyl. Yeah. Like, oh, this is the kind yeah. of stuff, like... Yeah, I mean, I guess anybody could get into any genre on vinyl, but like this There's sort of thing in old yeah. country and stuff, I really like to hear on the like yeah. The top and the, like, I uh, I thought about doing vinyl, but it was another thousand really. So it's yeah. like, what's I the minimum on, on vinyl? Uh, I did, um, I think two fifty. Oh, that's yeah. Good. Which doesn't so sound really, like a big came, number, but yeah, it came in around four. I still got a few cartons. So. <laughs> 
so they're still available. And do you have it set up on a website like where you can go order it from you and you'll mail uh, it out? Or you can't mail a record. No, I can. I mean, you can contact me through my email. So. Yep. Okay. And that's M uh, M F Movie M Picture F at Gmail. We'll put a link. We'll put a link to this. Yeah. And it'll be on YouTube. So what we're going to do with the YouTube videos is we're putting the shows on YouTube and then in the description on YouTube, yeah. we'll put the links to where people can okay. go buy the CDs, go see the videos and yeah. all that stuff because it's, you know, turns into a marketing tool. Right. Um, and then you never know, somebody's up at four o'clock in the morning wondering about yeah. whatever happened to that hockey player that was married to Carrie Fisher. So we're coming back in 10 <laughs> seconds. You know, she never changed her name. No. Carrie Underwood. I'm going to run some PSAs after this. And you don't want two people running around with the same name. <laughs> yeah, Carrie Fisher. <laughs> Can you guys hear that? I can. That's my buddy Terry. So he does a jazz show on uh, No, uh, Stephen does. Do have that case. And Terry does the hangover tour. Yeah, but I don't have a lot of my repeats. He also has a blue show, too. Okay. Morning, so. Okay, I'm going to read a PSA. Okay. How are we doing time? The St. John's Women's Center offers the region's first and only drop-in therapeutic counseling program for self-identifying women. Sessions are free and confidential, and you don't need an appointment or referral. Sessions are held on Tuesdays, 12 to 7 p.m., and Wednesdays, 12 to 5 p.m. For more information, go to www.sjwomenscenter.ca. The St. John's Women's Center is located at 170 Cashin Avenue Extension. You can phone them at 709-753-0220. Back in 30 seconds. Okay. Oh, thanks. That was fun. We're doing pretty good after Jake, but Shannon's, I'm worried about her, you know, mm -hmm. we'll see, but we'll talk another time. Welcome back to the Mulberry Creek Hour. I'm Vicki Morgan. I'm joined by my good buddy, Mike Fisher, and Josh is over behind the board, keeping us all, keeping the boat. <laughs> in line. We've got two creatives in the room now, and uh, man, oh man, it's uh, like herding cats, isn't it, Josh? Uh, so before, okay, so if you, okay, I'm going to, I want to make sure you get all the information on here. Um, Mike Fisher, so it's Psych E Punk Mike Fisher on Facebook. Uh, no. No? Let's go back. Okay, let's start uh, over. Tell me about the socials where people can contact you, find, and hear your music, and get in touch. Okay, Mike fisherpsychepunk.com is my website. Yeah. All one word. Yeah. Um, Facebook is uh, just uh, Mike Fisher, I believe. And um, the uh, Instagram, I can't even remember Instagram. So uh, Bandcamp is yep. uh, Mike Fisher 1 at Bandcamp. So it's Mike Fisher, F-I-S-H-E-R. Yeah. There's no C in there. No C. It's the traditional spelling of Mike Fisher. It is. Yes. So Mike Fisher uh, is on Bandcamp and all the socials, and we will yeah. we'll post links to all yeah. the places where you can find them. Don't forget, Saturday evening, Mac Dines and Zyno are opening, and then Mike Fisher's got, he's doing a CD release party for the brand new EP. And I'm going to keep an eye out for the book. I'm excited to hear, <laughs> because yes. you're a fountain of, like, what's he going to do next? Absolutely fantastic. So we got all the socials, all the links, and, of course, at Fred's, so he's going to do a CD release at Fred's on Sunday at 1 o'clock. And that one is free and family-friendly. You can bring the kids yeah. to that one. So there's no reason. Like, I know you can't bring them to the ship at 10 o'clock or midnight or whatever, but you can bring them out. To the, and Come that's been, like... brunch on Duckworth. And oh, man. Mm -hmm. Take Fred's a little and... stroll downtown. Go down. What is it? See and be seen. Take a walk yeah. and make sure everybody can see you. <laughs> Hopefully the weather will hold. And it doesn't matter. You can, yeah. We're out in the rain anyway. Mike Fisher, yes. thank you so much. Well, thank you. For coming thank on to Mulberry Creek awesome. Hour, buddy. This was yeah. really, really nice to catch up. And congratulations on... On everything, I'm just so, and I'm also a personal, personal congratulations for retiring. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> congratulations for, in, yeah. <laughs> for living the next part of your life. Yeah, well, I can do more of this now. So. Do all the, I can't believe how much you got done in in yeah. spite of working also, <laughs> or on alongside of, because, uh, you know, you're just really, really talented, and I'm glad to see yeah. you're sharing it with everybody, and uh, I'm Thank excited you. to see everything that you come up with. And we're looking forward to the show on Saturday. Josh and I will be there front and center, Yay. singing along and all that stuff. And just, you know, you know no spinning, I mean? no spinning. The pump days are gone. <laughs> as long as there's chicken wire up, we'll be safe, because I yeah, do like wire. to throw beer bottles and things like that. Okay. Yeah, shows, but, 
but it was a really great and so we'll see you on saturday mike and it was really a pleasure and thank you so much for being in here and say hey to shannon and uh keep keep your stick on the ice mike <laughs> I will, I'll keep my stick, yes. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks so much. Josh, what do we got next? We got, we got a song? An Elizabeth Riley Band um, Hotel Motel, and we'll be right back. Awesome. Thanks so much. Cool. So I'll drop you another disc. And uh, uh, yeah, what I'll do is I'll send you an email with all the proper links. Yes. I'll do um, that tonight when yes. I get home, just because yes, yes, yes. I can't remember them all. And they're all so, okay. you know how Instagram's all weird and, and Twitter, oh, you know, they're all like. <laughs> Twitter, X2513, you know, so. Um, so, yes, we will see you on, I forgot we were on live there, so I'm just going to yeah. have like a little aside, but I'm not going to do that because we're on Facebook Live. Hello. <laughs> uh, so I we'll didn't see do you. my hair. Where are the makeup people? Where are the people coming in like Davos for shining this and all that stuff? Anyway, Mike, it was yeah. a pleasure. Well, thank you. We'll see yes. You. We'll see you yeah, thanks a lot. Thank night. you. Good job. Yes. Easy. You good getting back in here? You're good getting back in here. I parked over by the field house. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. See you. See you Something's going on with the... Uh, the balance on the, the CD player. I don't know what's going on. It's like the uh, the left side is super low. I thought it was Mike's CD, but this one's doing it too. Is it the feed going out? Yeah, it might be. Well, I mean, it's but it could be coming from the, the Are we doing another player. song? We can. We got twelve minutes. Okay, perfect. Oh, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read. I have oh, a. That's a good I have something. Uh, I'm gonna try something new today. Boom. What do you think of that? I'm going to read the first, That's great idea. Read the first chapter. Get some feedback. What do you think? Perfect. Are we going to play anything else? Because I can. No. Nope. Relax, relax. I don't think we're going to do anything else. <clears throat> this is only. Oh. What? What? This is pretty fun. We've got some names in here that I didn't realize, but that's okay. Here we go. It's all feedback. It's preview time. Yeah. That was a fun interview. Oh, Mike's awesome. This CD is, uh, so is awesome. rocking. It is really, really good. He's a sweetheart. He's uh, like a peel back the layers. He seems so quiet and so like just just a gentleman and uh, just talented, talented like bursting with talent. So much creativity and uh, I'm just really glad. I'm really, really happy that he's retired because now he can do all the fun stuff and he's not tied to a desk or you know, that sort of stuff. So. That's right. I think Mike might be in my new book a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, he was there for a lot he of was, stuff. He was present. He was, yeah. He would he would be able to tell you from the other side of the microphone what was going on there for some of the stuff. Mm. That's pretty fun. Yeah, see the I don't know what's going on there. See, the, see the, the levels on the left and right? And there's so no there's some problem with, with the balance. And there's something we can do here? Well, I could crank it all the way over to the left and then put, turn it up a lot, but there's something, there's something wrong there. Might be a loose connection or something on the CD player. Is it just from the CD? Yeah, everything else seems fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How much time have we got? Five fifty. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about Andy's show for just a second, and then we got everything else. Covered it. That was really fun, with Mike. Look, I actually had notes today. That was a notes. lot of freaking names. Yeah, he was. That was awesome. Thank you, Mike, for coming in. This is a little small. This is the Elizabeth Riley band. I didn't introduce this, did you? Here we go. This is our friend Carmel and Patricia from Ottawa and Newfoundland. And a couple of, other, of their buddies. She loves them. You can find them on Facebook, Elizabeth Riley band. If you're into that sort of thing, it's backwards, but you could get into what sort of thing? Good music. Good music. My headphones are coming apart, and I've got little pieces of plastic in my ears. That's who's not into good music. Weirdos. <laughs> Did you just ask me if I like music? Why don't you ask me if I like food? Mm. You know, I realized the other day that um, people might find us a little weird if they haven't seen the movies we're constantly referencing. Yeah. Why do they say those? Th Why is she non sequitur? Yeah. Ridiculous. It's like she knew what he was going to say back, and it wasn't funny or relevant to anything. It's a lovely. <laughs> if Josh hadn't watched a bunch of movies before we met, we'd know, have nothing to talk about. We'd, I don't know that he would have been able to talk to me. <laughs> and it's really great that I knew some of the most of the references. So I was like, "Oh, he means would I like to go out with him?" I don't think that's. I don't think that's what happened. That's what happened. Do you remember we were going to go see Superman? That's true. And then I did. invited him over to see the first three oh, movies. Oh, that's right. We did. Yeah. So we got thirty seconds. 
I invited him over to see the first few movies so that the <laughs> next one would make sense, which is not that nobody needs to do that. All those movies should be able to stand on their own. But anyway, he came over to see the movies and <laughs> we didn't watch the movies. We're coming back in 15 seconds, folks. And you know what my roommate said the next morning? Got some size of shoes. <laughs> nothing happened. That's what was really funny. Literally nothing happened. Welcome back to the Mulberry Creek Hour. I'm Vicki Morgan. And man, oh man, are you missing the conversation. If you're not watching the Facebook Live, you are probably you're probably, okay. you're, you're, probably, you're, probably fine. you'll probably still be able to look us in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're listening to the Mulberry Creek Hour, of course, it must be Tuesday between 5 and 6. I don't know specifically what time, but that's where we are every single Tuesday. And we love it. Had trouble, had trouble getting in here to the end of the day because they upgraded the security system and to make it more efficient. And anyway, there's all you need to know about that. Um, I wanted to try something new on the air today. So a couple of things happened. About a month ago, I met a lady who I had never met before. And I wanted her to, you know, get to know me in the most efficient way possible. So I gave her a copy of my book, the first book I published, uh, that we published, For the Grace of Joe. And I gave her a copy of our CD. Haven't heard from her since. I don't know if that means anything, but I did. I did say if you like me after you. I think she was so intimidated by the quality of your. <laughs> I don't think that's output. what happened. Anyway, what that led to was there was a whole bunch of stuff in this first book that I was really like I didn't use real names and things like that, and it really bothered me. And I was there was stories in there like there was one lady that came back after she read the book and she said, "I'm shocked that Josh stayed with you through that." I don't know how to take that, but anyway. So it was like, oh, then maybe I shouldn't promote the book and maybe I shouldn't tell anybody about it because maybe someone would have feedback like that. So I really didn't. Um... Anyway, after that experience a month ago with the lady who uh, has yet to get in touch and follow up with me, um, I went back and fixed the stuff that I was nervous about. So I changed all the names back to the real names and uh, I changed a few things around just to make sure that the timeline made sense. And um, it was rough. A few times I've gone back to do some editing last night as another example. I was a mess after, so I don't know if that means it was well written or if it's just such a trigger to read those stories again. But anyway, it's important to share your stories. On that note, I am working on another book and you can see this is a draft. So when you publish with KDP, which is where we publish, and we've coached a few people through publishing because uh, that's something that we do. Um, it is a, a pretty long process. It is a little easier to have somebody who has been through the process to yeah. help you with formatting and um, programs because sometimes if you do it in like Google Docs, it doesn't translate well to KDP and you need some formatting stuff done. We do that. Anyway, I'm working on, and you can order a draft copy to look at because I need a paper copy in my hands. I'm, I'm not great with screens where I need to have paper in my hands for editing. And so this is, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, I have two things I want to share before the end of the show today. First of all, thank you to Andy Jones for sending, uh, for giving a letter of support for our ArtsNL application for this project. Um, he's amazing. And Andy has a show coming up at the LSPU Hall starting on Wednesday, May 31st. Uh, it's called Don't Give Up On Me Dad. And it's about, uh, I, it's a one-man show. Uh, Andy wrote it. I know he was working on it for a long, like years. He was, he's was he been working on this for years and he appeared on, he was on it. We did a beautiful, beautiful two-part episode of Ounce of Prevention with Andy Jones. Um, and at that point, he had, he had his whole wall was lined off with the research he was doing for this show that's opening on Wednesday. So we're really proud of Andy for, you know, finding the inspiration and the courage to share his story. It's called Don't Give Up On Me Dead. And of course, uh, I'm not going to say what the show is about because I haven't seen it yet, but um, it's, you know, definitely... Uh, got a lot of elements in there about uh, losing Louis um, when him uh, when Andy and Mary Lynn lost Louis a number of years ago to suicide. Um, Andy, uh, they were devastated, and they've been such a resource for people who have gone through that experience as well. Uh, for people in the community who have, who have been there, and they just they're just wonderful, beautiful people, and I can't wait to see the show. Really, of course, I'm literally we're in the front row. I cannot wait. <laughs> I can't wait to be there uh, and support Andy. So you can get tickets. Uh, there's a um, so it's going from May 31st to June 11th. And there's on June 10th, it's an accessible show. There's a live stream and audio description on June 10th, so if you want to go to that show. And they're doing this new thing, which I think is gorgeous. Pick your price. May 31st show, June 6th and June 7th. They want to make sure that everybody can get to see this show. Whether you get down, if, if there's, so there's no financial barriers. Uh, there's no listening. There's no accessibility. The building is accessible. There's uh, audio description. Um, uh, sorry, live description. Audio description and a live stream so you can watch it from home if you don't want to leave the house because Andy gets it on every level Andy gets it uh, mental health stuff is uh, I, 
anyway, we'll post a link to the shows that we did with Andy for Elms and Prevention. And I'm going to switch gears a little bit because Andy, this is this is a project that Andy has helped bring to life. And I want I thought if I read the first chapter, yeah, because last week, thanks to Perry Chafe and uh, DC and Rich Sepka, um, it hit like 1,200 views. So there's an audience. Like people are watching, maybe not a, while we're while we're uh, while we're doing it live or whatever, but they're watching the live stream after the fact. And of course, when it's on YouTube, it also gets lots of views. So I wanted to share this first chapter. Uh, the book is tentatively called How to Fail a Documentary Filmmaking, and this is the very first chapter. I'm going to do a live reading on the air. Is that okay with you? Let's do it. Okay. This is chapter one. It's called Meet Me at the Rose from How to Fail a Documentary Filmmaking. It is a draft, so I am very interested in hearing that you love it. If you don't like it, I will crumble and cry. Just and leave it alone. Never, Just keep scrolling. I'll, I'll stop writing it. <laughs> but anyway, here's the first chapter. Let me know if you like it. Okay. It's called Meet Me at the Rose. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to post a picture because this really happened. I guess it all started when I paid Sean Majumder $150 to kiss me at a tsunami benefit. Gotcha. So far? You good? Pretty good. Okay. It was supposed to be 100 but he and Mark Creech thought it'd be funny to ask for more money in front of a full Delta Hotel ballroom of people. It was their opinion that a Red Cross teddy bear and a kiss from a famous comedian was worth at least 200 Sean held his hosting microphone to my mouth and said, Tell them what you just said to me. I leaned in and I said, I said that's a lot to pay when I don't know what I'm getting. The crowd went wild. My friend Tanya King was howling and cheering me on from the audience. Mike Hanrahan from the Irish Descendants, who had just finished playing, was at the side stage grinning at me, and Mark Critch took out his camera. I was recently divorced with money burning a hole in my pocket from an insurance payout. I'd been in a hit-and-run accident from a, with a stolen car, so the Part B benefits gave me a nice little going-away present after just leaving the guy I'd married at Santa Rice at a Leafs game. I ran into Mark again during a Ron Hines show at the Rosen Thistle a few months after the Tsunami Benefit show. I was on a sort of date with a young actor friend. I'd been chasing him for months, and we were finally going out socially after a play at Rabbit Town, and he had invited two other girls who were hanging around the box office that night. They didn't know him very well, and he included me in their conversation to ask, what is it I do exactly? A common question among insecure artist types who've just been asked what they do for a living and don't want to appear poor. I regaled the young ladies with a lengthy list of Aiden's accomplishments and talents. Writer, actor, theater owner, entrepreneur, director, producer, philanthropist, community organizer. So much so that I think in that moment he realized I was in love with him. And he said, wow, I had no idea I'd done all that. Are you, or that you cared about any of it. We looked into each other's eyes for a moment, and then one of the girls touched his arm and said, So who's Ron Hines anyway? And my eyes rolled so far back in my head, it actually hurt. That's about when Mark walked in with a couple of road crew guys from 22 Minutes. I was so happy to see one of my fans, I jumped up and hugged him. And he was one of my fans. He introduced me to his buddies like jocks talk about the big game. So me and Majumder are hosting this fundraiser gala, right? And the Red Cross boys comes over, and they're selling these teddy bears for $10. And they said some missus offered a hundred bucks if Sean would hand deliver it to her. And you know it's Majumder. He said, sure, I'll kiss her for a hundred bucks. So they got on stage and this one here tears his clothes off and makes out with him. You can see how our recollections differ. I didn't care about, how, about specifics at that point because one of the guys with Mark had sat across from me and he had the clearest blue eyes. He reached out his hands for mine while we talked and like we'd been apart for lifetimes. I felt a connection to Adam instantly. And that was before I found out he was the, dire the director of photography for the Trailer Park Boys and the field DP for this hour's 22 minutes and the producer of multiple documentaries. I should go back a little further, I guess. I had never held a camera in my life before I met Adam. I had been interviewing hockey players for a column I had been writing, hence the press pass that put me under the bleachers at mile one to accidentally on purpose meet Mark Rich and Sean Majumner in the first place and get invited to the Tsunami Benefit Party. But I'd never taken so much as a picture. There was always a newspaper photographer who would go back after the interviews and take a photo to go with the stories or professional headshots from the interviewees themselves. I had been behind the scenes on a couple of hockey broadcasts and watched a director call cameras and shots, and I had done some streeters for the NHL exhibition game, but I was never, ever, and I can't stress this enough, behind a camera. So not only was Adam around celebrities on a regular basis, but he told me about a documentary project of his where he traveled fully funded to California in an old Cadillac painted like the Canadian flag to the set of The Price is Right. There were legions of fans that treated the game show like a religion, and so Adam set off from his home in Ontario with his brother as his assistant, and together they took an epic road trip that along the way included interviewing Hunter S. Thompson, visiting a brothel in Nevada, chatting with survivalists in the desert, and finally meeting the superfans of The Price is Right. The film won awards, and I still have a copy on VHS. It was the coolest thing I'd ever heard. Getting paid to make a film and picking your own crew and flitting off to have fun with a pile of cameras? <laughs> Fifteen years later, we were sitting on a Zoom call during the pandemic catching up. I had started a production company trying to do what he did, and it was failing miserably. 
But then I had also gone to university and finished a degree, a degree and a master's, but I wasn't using any of it doing videos for acquaintances who only knew my number when they wanted free work done. There were a couple of projects that started out promising, but seemingly nobody wanted to give me money to go have, friends, have fun with my friends and some cameras. I was duped. Adam laughed when I told him how bad things were. He said it all sounded completely normal for a filmmaker's journey. I argued that his life sounded so glamorous like doors flew open for him and everyone rallied around to support his creativity. He laughed even harder at that. He assured me that he got rejected all the time and it felt good to hear that from someone I respected and admired. It felt extra good coming from Adam because he always treated me like an equal. And then, as a joke, I said, I was thinking of writing a book called How to Fail a Documentary Filmmaking. He laughed and said, that's a great idea. You should make a documentary about that. And I said, who the hell would ever want to see that? And Adam replied, I would. So All right. Chapter one. That's chapter one. And that's, of course, the, that's the end of the Mulberry Creek. It's just in draft form, so let me know if you liked it. Uh, and I think I want to, you know what? We're sharing. This is a sharing, sharing show. We're talking to artists. We're talking to people who are writing books and making music and all that kind of stuff. So thank you for listening to me every week. Uh, we definitely appreciate it. Let me know what you thought of that. Would you buy a book? Would Get in touch. Be? If that was the first chapter, would you even consider reading the rest of it? Oh, I want to know what happens next. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Mulberry Creek Hour. I'm Vicki Morgan. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for tuning in. And we will see you next Tuesday. Bye. Thanks for watching. That was painful. The second page in, the second page in, I was like, shut up, shut up, shut up, stop <laughs> talking, ask them if they're okay, check in and see if everybody's still okay. That was painful. Anyway, but it we're perfect. exercising that muscle more and more, and uh, it'll get stronger. Because we're about sharing, right? That's right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you share the show. We'll subscribe. You, tell your friends about us. Get in touch if you want to be on the show. Hey, Henry's here. Henry, you want to say hey? See you later, guys. Amazing. Bye.